thought this was an interesting device. Basically, it's a machine to pick up uh, silicon wafers and move them to various stations in, um, in the uh, making process. So what we have here is we've got kind of a stepper motor with a rotary system on it. And then this whole head slides forward and backward like this. And um, it's pretty neat inside here. Actually, I've taken off some of the covers. On this side, we have, underneath this cover, we have... I had to look these up. I've never seen these before. These are our fiber optic switches. Apparently, these are fiber optic light guides. And they send out something, and they're both in send and receive. And when they get, when they get the light back or and some kind of a reflection, then it knows it has something. And apparently there's little settings and stuff, and each one of these will handle three. And on this side, so I can rotate this. On this side, you've got the fiber optics that looks like they take a right angle because it actually looks for a wafer right in here, or maybe at 90 degrees, maybe. And uh, here, there were little clamps holding end effectors. And these are ceramic. These things are really hard, and this is very special ceramic. And it's it's and it's a bloody shame that they're that they're broken, but there's it's still amazing this stuff. This stuff is very strong. You could break this, I think, if you really worked at it. But this stuff is. Uh, I looked it up. It's actually alumina, and it's supposed to be about three times um, harder than than sting, even stainless steel. So it could easily scratch stainless steel. And. Um, Apparently, there was a, a system where one of these, actually this, this would actually uh, move forward. And you've got this, and you've got belts and stepper motors and pulleys to let this go like this. And I think this machine can actually rate, go up and down. These little, these little tines at one time could go up and down and pick out a disc. This is, this is a fanatic just the fanatic attention to detail. This 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 thing approaches approaches like optical quality, and generally the bearings we find in here are really good. Um, you have a photo interrupter down here. Nothing really right home about. Also interesting is for um, in keeping with sparing no no expense. This here block here. This is um, it feels like. Actually, it feels like it's, it's um, I suspect it's high, high molecular weight polyethylene, but it has a very, very high Teflon. You can feel the Teflon in this. It's, this would make a good guitar nuts and stuff. They actually have threaded stainless steel um, nut certs inserted right into the Teflon. It, once again, this is fanatic. Stainless steel screws everywhere. This was ceramic. Stainless steel covers on this stuff, and uh, it's... Excuse the horn again, but this this is an amazing piece. Nice danger. But there was another warning on here that said that this 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 machine could actually clip you in the head as well. Clip you in the head as well as crush your hands, which I found um, daunting and amusing. And you've got adjustment for pulleys in here, um, so it's pretty cool. And um, like when I look at this stuff, I'm not. I think I have an. I, I think I've got a handle on what this is. But still, I'm not used to running across stuff like this. I mean, this this isn't for every uh, every day. And uh, look at the, the attention to detail. You've got stainless steel caps over over ball bearing ends. This seems to be. I'm not even sure, but this might be some kind of system to lock these in even farther. But um, so it's all pretty interesting. I opened up the unit and flipped it over. The, um, the housing seems to be made out of either cast aluminum or maybe even magnesium. Um, I'm not sure which at this point. Maybe I could take a shaving and burn it to see if it burns and stuff. Um, it's probably aluminum for cheapness and stuff. Magnesium's more expensive. I'm hoping it's aluminum because it could be recycled. And you've got a big, actually, it's actually a tiny, it's, for some reason they wanted a, a very thin, narrow um, motor. It's still, um, um, uh, 0.75 amp like the the wider stouter motors and it still had this one as as you can see as this these other wires uh, uh, these other wires are for optical encoder you've got optical encoder on this side and you have the motor wires on this side and um, let's see, make sure I got which which actually these these are the motor wires and these are optical encoders the mo uh, all these Vexta motors have brown 
brown, blue, um, white, black, and red. Um, they've got a little plate here. You have a little plate here, and there's unfortunately there's two Allen screws, two hex screws underneath here, and two bolts to pull this motor back to tension it. And this rotates like this. Actually, the, the other thing rotates instead of this, but this is easier to hold like this. And they have some weird custom bearing here. I think this look actually looks custom because it's all radius for cables and stuff. You can see you have cables going through here. And you've got um, around the sides you have a smattering of optical sensors, like here, that show where the end of the uh, this end of the uh, rotation is. On the top with the cover removed, you have two. Uh, Actually, we have a little pointer thing. You have two um, linear rails here. These are funny. They're round, but they've got a little groove. I don't know if you can see it, but you've got a little. There's a little groove on each side, and actually, these don't turn. Like you can grab this, even though these are only supported in one rail. You can you can grab this whole thing, and these do not turn on the shaft this way, and uh, and um, so these there's. There's, I guess, there's two operations, or they need two, 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 two movements for each one, and uh, there's little limit switches here at the end. The little limit switches here. This is where the, um, this is where the bearing actually support actually mounts. This is going to be a real bear to take apart selectively. That's what I want to do. The motors are here, and they got little stainless steel covers on them. To, uh, I guess to, to make them, to keep them clean. But why? Of, of it's of the worry about cleanliness there's a big hole in it and so I think it's more vanity than cleanliness uh, so you've got a motor here and you've got which is a and a belt and these are actually kind of interesting belts they're uh they're probably made special for a clean room um, and they're both attached these to these little uh these little uh slider things um, with the linear be linear bearing inside and then you've got a pulley on this side and it can slide back and forth like this using the motor. And there's uh so I guess this thing homes deep down in here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's little limit switches. And there's a blade, which you probably can see. But there's a little blade right here where they where there's a photo interrupter. And when this gets to the end, it hits the photo interrupter. And if it goes a little bit more, you hit the limit switch. Um, the only thing I can figure is that um, the uh, sometimes these photo interrupters go bad, and actually they they say that the shelf life, even the shelf life or the service life for a photo interrupter is like five years, and maybe they want something just in case the, uh, the photo interrupter failed, the thing wouldn't destroy itself. Also here on on um, on this piece here, they've got they did a thing where they've got, uh, and I've seen this a little bit. They've got a nut. You have a nut, and then you've got um, it's an Allen stud, and you can kind of adjust this, and then lock it down to get the angle you want to fine tune it. I opened the side cover. Um, the base of this is is made of about a centimeter of aluminum, and you probably have a centimeter here. And uh, this was whole piece was probably carved out of one chunk of billet. Um, these are um, over here. You've got little adjusters for the uh, um, for the pulley. Through here, or on top of here, I don't know if it's visible because it's hard to see with ref reflections, but there's a little groove here. There's a little groove right here that these, uh, I don't even know how to look for these for these particular rails. I've seen a lot of linear stuff, but I've not seen any of these. Um, and you should, they have the belt just un unceremoniously put on almost like a 3D printer under here with there's two screws here, two screws here. Interesting thing about this is the cable management. They have three cables for the end effectors. They've got uh, three three cables, and these are pretty beefy cables. And I guess they never thought they didn't have the electronic. Then they didn't have the electronic experience to put, put like um, like an i i an i uh, i square i squared c bus and and um, so they have got these three big cables. And then they've got the cables go underneath. There's a piece of sheet metal under here. It's kind of interesting. There's a piece of sheet metal right here, and the cable goes underneath here and there, and it it makes a ninety to, it makes a kind of a loop. It goes around here, and then it goes up there. So this must have been quite the, the, the cable management nightmare. And they needed a little 
a little another piece of stain this piece of stainless here to make it work. And here you can see you've got another um, another photo interrupter. On my bench, I have the little unit that was on top of the uh, uh, wafer handling machine, and you can see it has little little uh, little things here that held the fingers. And each one of those fingers, it was actually one of these. This is actually an N effector, and this one's dirty and it's been used. And um, and um, and these are actually a, a ceramic, alumina ceramic. Here, if you clang two of them together, you can get an idea of how hard they are. And what these were was so basically, this thing would be bolted inside the um, the handler, and then a silicon wafer. This is a really old wafer. It's like a like a three inch wafer. It's very old. It's probably a, almost a part of Silicon Valley history. But this is a little tiny wafer, and um, what this this whole unit had to be able to work with wafers that were hot because they were they were baked, and so that's why probably why they used um, ceramic for it. Um, this material, uh, they have issues with this material and porosity. So this is actually a really hard material to clean in a way. And, um, really hard, um, to, uh, you know, to, it's actually an unusual material for a clean room. It's good that it doesn't give off anything if you heat it up, but it's bad because it's, it's surface is, it's surface is, uh, you can hear it. You can hear it. The surface is, um, at least the surface is kind of porous, and all the, the manufacturers who make this stuff, they have uh, all their, their claim to fame, as it were, is um, how, how porous their ceramic is not. They also make ceramic bearings out of this stuff. This is what's inside this unit. Um, on the back, we have a stepper motor right here. We have an optical encoder. Uh, so this is, was made to be run um, uh, closed loop. And the motor, you can't see it that well under here, but there's a pulley right under there where the motor um, has its shaft. And that turns, the little belt, it turns a belt, which actually turns, this is actually a tiny linear, uh, tiny uh, ball screw. And uh, there's two of these. Um, the belt turns one, this one, and it goes one way and it also turns another one you can see that there's two there's two um, end bearings here and it turns a second one right here it's hard to get light in here um, and these are some kind of linear guides um, they actually use a system where they uh, they use the water jet to make this it's, I know it doesn't appear to be laser it seems to be water jet but they had drilled a hole here or CNC to hole here and they used a laser or or most likely a water jet to make this slot and then they have a pinch bolt right here which holds this together they also use this kind of construction in um, the rest of the unit and um, we have a shaft here this is actually a linear shaft linear bearing and shaft and um, apparently they drilled a stress relief hole here and um, you'll see you'll see this hole in like um, in holes like this in, in the firearm receiver sometimes to stop a stress crack. Um, and uh, I guess they just water jet this or laser. I because of the material thickness, I think they have uh, they uh, water jet it in, in a pinch bolt, just like the little unit. There are also some photo interrupters. Let's see if I can peel this up here. They're also some and get some light in there, which is not easy. Um, there's a photo interrupter right here, right? There's actually the, the, the electrical part and it actually the interrupter the little flag thing is right there. Um, and there's like, there's a, there's at least two of them in here. Uh, this was disconnected here. You can get a good look at the, uh, the, the tiny miniature ball screw and now I'll see it work. I've got it propped up and I've got it hooked up to a cable to it to a driver it's hooked up also which is hooked up to an Arduino micro which is running a piece of software which I'm also going to share on this channel and the Arduino forum and uh, and uh, I've set I've got it set so they're all together and, um, and if I tell it to move You can see how they spread out and how they would have spread out when they had the uh, uh, how they would have had spread out when they had the end effectors on there.
this thing, this little guy must have cost a lot of money. But if you look at the bottom, you'll see hammer marks where somebody did something. It looks like somebody tried to pry this out. I didn't do this. This looks like a, quite the case of butchery on the bottom. Um, I've seen some of these, um, uh, at least one wafer, one of these wafer handlers on eBay, and it was, it was expensive. And um, I was lucky to get any of this stuff to um, to examine and learn about, and I might be able to make uh, something out of some of it. And um, I'm not going to eBay any of it because um, because I'm, because that would put me in competition with my benefactors, and I won't do that. This is the little unit that was on, t on the side of the uh, the uh, finger thing. And apparently, this is just um, uh, basically um, a photo interrupter kind of relay switch kind of thing. And um, um, first, I want to explain that I've got um, powering. It. I've got an old. Um, this is an old power supply from uh, um, from a hard drive case, and these are these are kind of handy because they give off both five and twelve volts positive. And um, um, I just have this alligator clipped down and uh, together. And um, also, you should always be careful whenever you're working with power because even this twelve volts could start a fire if you're not careful with it. And um, if you do anything, and if you do anything, basically, it's your your own risk. I'm trying to give you, or share. I'm trying to share my experience as such, and um, what works out for me may not work out for you. But I try to be careful with things. Um, like I use a, you know, I have my carpet here, which is not static uh, immune, so you don't want to work on SD uh, uh, static sensitive stuff on, on a carpet like this. But it has an advantage that I could use little pieces of Velcro to, to um, stick down the wires so they don't come together and short out. And so I wouldn't want that. Anyway, I've got a, I've got this little unit powered by uh, it takes. Um, it says here it takes um, ten to twenty eight volts. I've got twelve volts running into it. I've got a voltmeter, and I have that set to uh, twenty volts. Um, the interesting thing about this thing is that you is and the really strange thing about this thing is it used these little it uses these little fiber optic. Uh, I don't know how well this. Uh, I'm going to try to get the contrast. I want to move them around, but it uses little uh, fiber optic light guides to, um, and these go on either side of the uh, uh, of the um, of the wafer, and I don't know why. Um, I don't. Maybe they thought that uh, that the wafer might be too hot, and uh, because this is going, if I turn this just right, so I can find it. If I turn it just right, um, actually, see, it actually shows up as red for me, but for you, you can see a little white dot there. And so inside of here, there's a little on one of these light guides, which are removable. Um, it send, uh, uh, there's an LED which sends light up this, uh, this light guide or this fiber optic. And in the end of this, there's actually a little tiny, it's quite amazing. There's a little tiny prism and both of these have a little prism. And, um, when the wafer comes, when the wafer becomes, uh, be, you know, interrupts it and actually you can, you can probably see that there's a green light down here. And uh, let's see if I can get this without glare. Um, so, yeah, you can see it. And if you look at a look on the left-hand side, you could see my it's putting out about a volt, which is actually, I think it's a volt's kind of paltry to be doing, sending signals around the machine. Um, the interesting thing about this is I find working on this industrial stuff that basically... They connect a series of modules, and this is this is an old machine. But they basically, they they connect a series of modules, and um, so so they do do some localized stuff. Um, like I'm still I'm still baffled by this. And actually, the funny thing is, I have the I have a little uh, I've got a little plastic screwdriver, and if I turn up the sensitivity all the way, the interesting thing is that. Uh, this thing isn't all that sensitive. Uh, I mean, it'll, it'll probably do with the wind behind it. And that's actually interesting. There's actually two signals that can do, can do a red or a green. So there's an iffy signal, too. Um, at least for the LED. 
don't know how far, but I can get these apart. And I have I have extra extraneous light in, in the room, but hypothetically, it should be enough where it checks. It, it checks across. It probably has a range of maybe six inches, anyhow. 